His body was broken. His blood was shed for our forgiveness. All right? So we have a responsibility. You ever been given something uh, uh, that you have a responsibility, you know, to do something with? And it's your responsibility and you have to do it. Well, we've been given a great responsibility because we've been given great forgiveness. Mark chapter 12, <clears throat> verses 29 through 31, the new century version. Mark 12, 29 through 31. Jesus answered, the most important command is this. I have a whole series on this one scripture. The most important command is this. Listen. Listen, Linda. Listen, people of Israel. The Lord our God is the only Lord. That's, pre that's pretty important. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all your mind, and all your strength. The second command is this. In another version, it says the second command is as important as the first, and it is this. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. There are no commands more important than these. Now, there's something here that I'm going to cover a little bit next week. I can't really cover uh, a lot of it today because it doesn't, it kind of fits better with next week's message on forgiveness. But it says, love others as you love yourself. Seems to me like there's a step to loving others. You have to learn to love yourself. So here we have this gap of what Jesus is expecting of us and what we're actually experiencing. Think about that for a moment. There's a gap here. The gap between what we hope for and desire in a relationship or relationships and what we actually experience. One side of the relationship gap is the reality of failed marriages, divorce, absent parents, rebellious children, disloyal friends, gossiping churches, betrayal, betrayal, betrayal. How many of you ever been betrayed? Everyone should raise their hand because we've all been betrayed at, at any level, at different levels. <clears throat> betrayal is an expectation that is never met. So who sets the expectation? We set an expectation on what we would expect from the other person to do for us or how we want them to behave around us. So when we set that expectation and it's not met, we feel betrayed. And that betrayal sets in, if you don't let it go and forgive, it sets in, it roots in, and it causes the end result that is bitterness. But on the other side of this relationship gap, Jesus is saying, love them like you love yourself. Love God, love them. John 13, 34. New King James, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. See, the big one there is just as I have loved you. How has Jesus loved us? The ultimate sacrifice is life. And we always, you know, you guys have heard me preach this on in Christmas. Uh, I always preach this one message because it's like always asked for. But we know that his sacrifice was not just his death on the cross. It was him being born of a human being. It was him putting on flesh. We may be used to this because we were born with it, but he had to put it on. He was, he was God, and he came down in, into flesh. That to me is like, that's, what's the beginning of death the day you're born? It's also the beginning of life, but it's also the beginning of death. Because that's the first day until the day that you die. Well, that was Jesus. He gave up life by becoming down into human flesh. That's how much he loved us, that he laid down his life. And he wants us to love others that way. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. So we got to build this bridge. What, is this, what does this bridge look like? What do we call this bridge between what we hope for and desire in relationships and we actually experience? Well, we call, first of all, we call upon the expert bridge builder, Jesus Christ himself, because he showed us by example how to love and how to forgive. 
So this bridge is called forgiveness. It's the only way to the other side. Because we can say the bridge is lack of betrayal. That's not going to stop. We're humans. People are going to let you down. People, you know, most of the time people let you down and they don't even know they did. <laughs> Sometimes we receive betrayal. We carry this burden of somebody doing something to us and they had no idea they did anything to you. Sometimes they do it to you on purpose. And they sit back and laugh at your reaction to carrying the burden of what they said or did to you. That's pretty evil, isn't it? <laughs> to start to deal with this side of the bridge that is riddled with betrayal and hurt and disappointment, emotional trauma, we need to deal with an emotion that we all have had, and that is, I don't care anymore. Whatever, oh, I, I wish they would remove that word from the vocab. I, I don't like, I, I used to use it, and then one day I said it, and I felt so dirty, <laughs> like I had said a four-letter word, right? Whatever, oh, the, the, the youth of today, whatever. No, it's not whatever. It's not whatever. I don't care anymore. Who cares? When you're saying these things, then you've arrived at this place where you need to work your way back to the other side. The fact that you can say that you don't care anymore shows that you do. If you really didn't care anymore, you wouldn't say anything. <laughs> right? If you didn't care, you wouldn't. Well, if I don't care, why am I going to say anything? But the fact that you're saying you don't care means that you actually still do. <clears throat> So what does work according to the Word of God? <laughs> what does work? I understand that it may seem insurmountable to do these things because of the amount of hurt and pain that has been inflicted upon you, and, but God seems to think that you can do it through faith because He wouldn't ask you to do something that you can't do. Right? He wouldn't put more upon you than you can. <clears throat> and... and if I would have taught this message 30 years ago, 25 years ago, I would have approached it completely different. Because even though I've gone through hurt and pains and things in my life and people have betrayed me and, and had uh, 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 trauma in my life, even though those things have happened, uh, they weren't nowhere to the level of what I saw through counseling and, and having people come into my office and share what somebody did to them, and wow. So I'm at a different place now. Now I'm at a place of empathy. Like, okay, Lord, you're asking me to preach this, but I know that it's difficult for some of these people because they are carrying the burden of what was done to them, and what was done to them was horrible, painful. Some of you are thinking of some things right now. But let's start with showing you how you arrived at this place of, I don't care anymore, whatever. It's a progression. The first part is distance. You create distance between you and the person that hurt you. Many of us do not like conflict, so we avoid the situation in turn, avoid that person. You ever do that? You ever run into somebody at a store and go the other way so you wouldn't have to say hi to them? Why are you laughing? Was it me? Did you see me in a store and you went the other way? I bet it was. Oh, there's Pastor Rick. He preached on Sunday and it really, really messed me up. I don't want to, I really don't want to see him. Right? <laughs> I don't want, you know, you look at, and you see, oh man, I've done it in a store and saw somebody and didn't want to say hi. <laughs> That's horrible. Forgive me, Lord. Right? And every time you run into that person, every time you see a certain thing, smell a certain thing, eat a certain thing, you remember what that person did to you. And what do you do? You get more distance between you and that person. You get more distance between you and the conflict. You make more distance between you, right? And you begin to neglect relationships and you don't maintain them anymore because you don't want to be hurt. Who wants to be hurt? Nobody. So you create distance, and then you create a wall. 
So you pro your progression is, now I've created a little bit of distance, but that's not enough because I can still see and feel and, and I have this hurt. So I'm going to build this wall between me and people so I don't feel this way anymore. Right? And you build a wall. And once you're done building the wall, you realize that the hurt and the pain and the bitterness is on your side of the wall. It's not even on the other side anymore. It's on your side. You went through all the trouble and all the struggle of building this massive wall between you and what you think is hurt and pain other people, and actually it's on your side of the wall. But you don't only wall out the bad people that have hurt you, you also wall out the good people that could help you. Eventually, you wall out God. You think you're protecting your emotions from ever being hurt again, but nothing could be farther from the truth. You're drowning in those emotions. But somebody threw a hose over the wall. <laughs> it was a thing, you know, the Argentinians and the Brazilians don't like each other. I don't know if you knew that. And they're, they're right up against each other. They, they border up against each other. And, you know, in soccer, it's like it, they're rivalries. And... Uh, so the Argentinians put it uh, years and years ago, put on the, on the front page of one of their newspapers that they were going to build a wall around their country to because they believe that they're really European, that they're not South American. And if you look at Argentina, most of their buildings are uh, very European looking and uh, they they don't eat as much rice and beans. They eat more pastas and meats. They can barbecue like no one else. Yeah, Argentinian meat is incredible. So anyway, but uh, they they wanted to. They said we're going to build a wall around the country. And Brazil wrote uh, the the next week or so on their front page, "Go ahead, and we'll just fill it with water. Like we're going to throw our hoses over it and fill your country. Go build a wall, and we'll fill it with water." Right? That's what will happen if you build a wall around yourself, trying to protect. You're going to drown in your own bitterness and your own emotions. Then you have escalation. So you've got distance, walls, and escalation. This means the situation now becomes bitter than, bigger than the situation was. So you thought that by building a wall and creating distance, the situation was going to get better, but it got worse. It got bigger. And that person that hurt you is no longer there. They've gone on with their life. They don't even know that you're drowning in your own emotions. If they did, they'd probably do a tap dance and, and celebrate. Or maybe they would ask for forgiveness. But you've, now you've escalated. We begin to drown in the situation while the people that cause the situation are high and dry. So we try to bring them down to our level. This does not work. This don't work. Now we have false belief. This is where the enemy comes in. So you see... He's been preparing you, like molding you, preparing you and removing the doors and removing to, to begin to lie to you now. This is where the enemy wants exactly where he wants you. You begin to imagine things that are not even there. People come and they want to help you or do something for you or they, and you automatically think there's something, there's, there's, a, there's a catch, there's a hook in this. This person is trying to do something to me. They're trying to betray me. They're trying to, and, you, and you, you have false belief about what's actually happening in your own little world. You read into things that don't even exist. You begin to believe the lies that the enemy is feeding you. And believe me, he is feeding you lies. When you don't know the facts, we begin to bring in our own ideas. You cannot trust your emotions when you are offended. If you're offended... You are the last person you should be taking advice from. When you're offended, you are the last person you, be, you should be taking advice from. It's not good advice once you're offended. And dare I jump into this here before I do the last one, the last step. Sometimes we jump in with others that are also offended. <laughs> And we look for those that are going to promote and excuse our behavior. And they're going to tell you, oh, yeah, take half. Right? 
Go get them. Get yourself a lawyer. Do this. Do that. Do the other. That ain't right. What they did to you. What they didn't do to you. What you know? And they jump in. I know somebody that for five thousand dollars will take care of your problem for you. We don't know anybody like that around here. In Miami, there were a dime a dozen. You don't want to be around people like that. You want people that are going to look at you in the face and say, you need to let this go. This is going to kill you. You know that unforgiveness scientifically has been uh, connected to cancer? They have done research where they, they interview people that are dealing with a certain type of cancer. I can't remember which one it is, but they're dealing with a certain type of cancer, and they start asking them questions, and like over 90% of them are dealing with some type of emotional hurt and unforgiveness. That's a, that's, you know, your, your emotions can affect your physical being. So false belief. The next one is hostility. This is the last one. You ever met somebody that's hostile? They went through all the steps before to get here. Now we have a hostile relationship with those around us. The holidays roll around. I don't want to go. I don't want to see my uncle. I don't want to see my cousin. I'm, 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 I'm. My cousin comes, you know, they, they, they got the perfect marriage and they got money and they live really well and they want to brag about their boat and, you know, and I don't want to hear, and you're, and you're just, and believe me, listen, when you're like that, people don't want to be around you either. Don't think that you're not, you're the only one, I don't want to be around them. No, they don't want to be around you either. <laughs> we have so much distance. Listen, I'm, I put all this into a sentence. We have so much distance that we built walls and, and the issue escalated into a false belief that has caused a hostile situation. You see how, how it progresses? So much distance that we built walls and the issue escalated into a false belief that, was, that has caused a hostile situation. Hostility is not the condition between you and another person, but the condition of your soul all by yourself. Hostility robs you from your peace and joy, even when that person is not even around. You, have, you behave hostile towards those that have not even caused you any harm. And people tend to distance themselves from you because of your bitterness. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 12 through 14. It gets better, I promise. Remember. That seems to be an important word in our scriptures. Remember that at the time you were separate from Christ. Do you remember that? <laughs> without hope and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, who once were far away, have been brought near through the blood of Christ, for he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. He goes right for the last step. He goes right for the last thing. He doesn't talk about unforgiveness. He doesn't talk about building the wall. He doesn't talk about faults. He just says, this is the, once you've gotten to this point, you're hostile. And he still said, I don't care how bitter you are. I don't care how big of a wall you build. I'm coming after you because I love you. And I'm going to forgive you for whatever you've done. That, that way you can learn how to forgive others. The reason why this scripture starts this way is because we, we tend to forget how much we have been forgiven. You know, and this is, this is a tough one because... There are so many different traumas and things in, in a room, even with you know just a few people in it. Uh, if you get into the thousands, then you can really start to cover a, a, a large spectrum of things. But it doesn't matter what it is. And you might say, well, I've never done that to somebody else. What did you do? You escalated. Because you said, this has been done to me, and I need to forgive myself, but I've never done that. You know, it's all sin, right? It all separates you from God. The white lie and anything as bad as you can come up with. Now, are there earthly consequences for certain things? There are. 
And sometimes you are going to pay for those. Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 12 through 14, I read, remember, and then it says, brought near through the blood. You built a wall, you created distance, and Jesus still brought himself near through his blood. He destroyed that barrier and the wall of, of hostility that we created. And then he began to build a bridge. <laughs> so what does he want from us? Jesus, what do you want from me? I'm hurt. You know, one of the things we say, you don't understand. <laughs> that might be true, actually. He doesn't stand, understand because he doesn't stand under anything, right? But to tell him that, that you, don't, you don't really get it, you, you don't... You know, it, it, I, just, I can't even say it. It just sounds weird to tell God something like that after what he's done in coming to the earth and dying on the cross for us. What does he want from us? Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. Get rid of all bitterness. That's easy enough. Rage and anger, brawling and slander along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. <sighs> Mamma mia. Forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Get rid of all this stuff. Get rid of your bitterness, your rage, your anger, your brawling, your slander, and every form of malice. Get rid of it. Doesn't that sound so easy? The power to forgive is in the just as. We need faith in what Christ did for us to have the power to do that for others. So when you're having trouble forgiving others, you're having trouble receiving Christ's forgiveness for you. I know. Pull your toes back. So when you find yourself saying things and saying this person and you're just upset and you're unforgiving towards somebody, think about it. You're having trouble receiving God's forgiveness for you. So how do I forgive this way? Start by realizing that your way is not working. These steps that you took to try and protect yourself, they don't work. You still have hurt, pain, still dealing with bitterness, and it's getting worse. Your way is not working. So by faith, let's do it God's way. How many wants to do it God's way? I, I'm tired of doing it my way. It hurts. I'm tired of the pain. I'm tired of the, I'm tired of the depression. I'm tired of the anxiety. I'm tired of being alone because people don't even want to come near me. Why is that? This way will guarantee peace and healing in your heart. Three steps to biblical forgiveness. Three steps. Number one, receive God's forgiveness. First Timothy chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. Even though I was once a blasphemer, that must be a bad word, and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of the Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinner, sinners, of whom I am the worst. See, it doesn't matter how bad of a thing was done to you. I'm the worst. If I'm the worst and I was forgiven, Isaiah 118, come now, let us settle this, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, I will make them white as wool if you only obey me. And what is he asking for you to forgive others? It's almost like a scale. You're going to receive the amount of forgiveness that you give. So if you're giving forgiveness to, to and that's not forgiveness towards God because God hasn't done anything. <laughs> right? Listen, 
Don't blame people. Don't blame God for what people do. You got people that run from church. They do those, those, those steps. They, they run from church. They build a wall, right? They come up with false beliefs. They talk about the church in a negative way. And then they become hostile towards the church. And they try to pull other people out of the church. Why? Because they're blaming a, a God for what people do. Church is not perfect. It was until I opened one, right? <laughs> church is not perfect. That's why we're here. That's why the church still exists. Once, once God fulfills what he needs to fulfill through the church, the platform of the gospel of Christ, once he fulfills that, we won't be here anymore. The church won't be needed anymore. But we're still here. We're still here to receive God's forgiveness. So your first one is receive God's forgiveness. And in there, there's another one, but we're going to cover that next week. Number two, freely give what you have received. So if you wanted, if you wanted to kind of like measure, you want to measure, like they say in the Midwest, you want to measure what you've received, go through the things that you have done, the life that you lived before Christ, the things that you did to others, the offense that others are carrying out there that maybe you didn't even know you gave them. That's a lot. Believe me, I'm a, blah, 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 I'm a blabber, so I know that I have said things that have offended others. I know that. Even a fool in few words appear to be wise. It's a proverb. You want to look wise? Shut your mouth. <laughs> I'm talking to me, by the way. <laughs> Right? Just be quiet. Never do this step of freely give what you've received without doing step one. Because you can't give what you didn't receive. Right? You can't give what you didn't get. So receive God's forgiveness and freely give what you have received. Matthew 10.8, freely you have received, freely give. The forgiven, forgive. Freely give what you have received. The forgiven, forgive. 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 21. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. All of this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them, and he was committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Wow. God said, I'm, I'm going to, I want you to do this. I want you to reconcile yourself to me. I want you to make up with those who have hurt you. I want you to, but before you do any of that, watch me. Let me do it for you at a level that you'll never have to do it for anyone else. You'll never have to forgive at a level that God has forgiven us. Think about that. The very ones that crucified him were forgiven because Jesus himself looked up to God and said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So love others. And number three, the last one is go first. Everybody say go first. Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He went first. 
Matthew 5, 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. James 3, 17 and 18. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. Righteousness is right standing with God, which means it requires forgiveness, doesn't it? But it doesn't require forgiveness from God because he already gave it. It requires you to receive forgiveness. Listen, this is for your own good. God is not asking you to forgive so that the other person gets away with what they did. That's not, next week you'll learn that, but that's not the reason at all. We are not excusing the trauma. We're not excusing uh, the hurt, the pain. We're not excusing that at all. We're not saying that what they did is okay because it's not. What we're choosing to do is to forgive them for what they did. And that doesn't happen, I forgive them, Lord.